How do you get money for your new startup? That's the question. in Gangnam, South Korea and Seoul. Yes, it's that place. Yeah, Gangnam style. In fact, right over there, right here, about to walk past it, is uh, one of the scenes from the actual music video where it was shot right over here. Now, I am not going to do the horse dance today, but be the whole point of that song was kind of to poke fun at the wealthy people of Gangnam. So, let's talk about wealth today. In fact, we're going to talk about finances to be specific. How do you get money for your new startup? That's the question. What are the options? Number one option. Pay for it yourself, out of your pocket. If you're not wealthy, don't do that. That's just a really bad idea. Number two, put it on your credit card. That is a worse idea. That is one of the worst ideas possible. Now mind you, there are companies that have succeeded and they were founded by a, fa a really like courageous founder who stuck everything on his credit cards and maxed them out. It's just a really bad way to operate though because then you're under a really hard, hard pressure to get some sort of uh, financial return on that investment, otherwise you're gonna be like ruining your credit. Bad idea. Next possibility, friends and family. That is an official term, that is not just what it sounds like, although it kinda is what it sounds like. A friends and family round basically means you know somebody wealthy who's gonna give you money. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. Those are good ideas. Now, there's a more official variation of a friends and family uh, uh, person and that's called an angel investor they don't have to be your friend or your family they just have to believe that the money they give you is going to return them more than the, a substantial profit basically um, now mind you an angel investor is not expecting you to be just profitable but rather multiple X on their investment profitable so if you're gonna tell them that you're gonna take a hundred thousand dollars from them and give them back 120,000, they're gonna tell you, mm, no. They want you to tell them you're gonna give them back a million dollars. Oh man, so they got music blasting here. Woo, that is loud. Seoul in general is a very loud place. Super fun, not easy to shoot videos here. Okay, so if you are going to pitch an angel investor, and I'll explain how to do that in a bit, um, the first thing they recognize is they are expecting at least a minimum of 20x return on their money. And the way that they, they operate, an angel investor works like this. They will give money to random startups, expecting that out of every 10 they give, eight will lose the money. That's what they expect. But those other one or two at the end of that 10 will pull in 20, 20x their money or more or better. So they'll give $100,000, company will be acquired for a mil uh, several million dollars, they get back a lot more money than they put in, okay? Probably much, much more than several million, 20 million, 30 million, something like that. That's typical, that's how angels work. These are just people with a lot of money and they're looking to make more money from their money. That's really what it comes down to. Typically, the, the people who have it though are looking to invest in something that, in some kind of sector that they're familiar with. So if you have an angel investor who does a lot of work in med tech, and that's his focus, and you have a GPS device, don't even bother. He ain't gonna invest in you. Highly unlikely. This guy's taking a selfie. Anyway, um, <laughs> soul is funny. I love it here. Anyway, oh, I don't wanna get hit by a car. That's a pretty street up there. Okay, anyhow. Um, so now, the way to work with angel investors, first you have to identify who it is that is a likely candidate to give you money. Meaning, they invest in what you do and at your stage. So if you're just starting out, you better have uh, some, something that shows that you can provide them some for, form of return on investment. And you have to look for someone who's looking to do seed round. Seed round means the very first money you get. That's your seed round. Next money you get is a series A, after that B, C, D, however long you go. Uh, usually it doesn't get past the B round or a C round and, and the company will have some exit at that point. Exit means someone will procure them or they'll go out of business usually in these day and age. It used to be an exit was going public but that's very rare at this point. Um, I mean it's not rare for the big companies but it's rare percentage wise of startups that go public. Um, so. Let's say you got these angel investor, you identified him, 
he invests in seed rounds within your sector. Okay, now how do you actually pitch to him? Next thing is, it's just a guy with a lot of money. You gotta keep that in mind. People are intimidated by this stuff. It's just a random dude or dudette. It's usually guys though, unfortunately. The industry is pretty gender imbalanced. But just some dude with a lot of money. I mean, really. So most people will take the traditional route. Not traditional route, the formal route. Hold on, I'm gonna check. I'm not gonna hit by no car. Um, most people take the formal route and send the executive summary to the guy. A cold call, basically, a cold email. That doesn't usually work. In fact, if you talk to angel investors, they'll tell you maybe 1% of their investments, if even that much, came from, from some kind of a cold connection like that. So while that could work, there is that 1%, and it's pretty low investment of, you, on your, of effort on your time, I mean, you could, all, you could just you know, send an email, it takes a few minutes, no big deal. It's not likely to work. So if you want something that's more likely to work, you gotta form the connection with the person to start with, okay? Now that's not so easy, that takes effort. By the way, it's really humid here, oh my God. All of South Korea seems to be really humid. Um, sorry for sweating away, woo! Okay, you gotta form the connection. Now there's several ways you can do this. The weak way, which I don't like, but it does work in some scenarios, is to go find a mutual connection to this person, like six degrees of separation. Just go on LinkedIn. See which one of your, your connections is connected to this dude, and it has to be a real connection, not some, someone just sh uh, changed cards with. Someone you know, and ask them for a introduction. That actually can work very well. It doesn't always, but it can. So-and-so goes to the angel investor, says, I know you, and I think your product sounds cool, and would you make an intro? But now mind you, you wanna make sure that the person who's gonna make that connection actually likes your product, or your service, your business. If they don't, don't do that. If they tell you it's a bad business idea, don't ask them for the connection. They can ruin it for you unintentionally. They could say things like, I think you should meet him, he has an idea. I don't think it's such a great idea, but maybe you do. Not how you want to start it up. You want, to, so you want the connection to come from someone who believes in you and what you're doing. Okay, now you make the connection. That's the weak way in my opinion. I don't like that way, it can work. There's a much better way. Find those people, figure out where they are, track them down, stalk them. Now don't do that. But you can get, do the next best thing. Oh, that's cool, it's a mirror. Uh, um, you can do the next best thing, um, and that is figure out where they are going to be doing anything in a public sector, public situation, and meet them there. So, a lot of these angel investors will be regularly speaking on different panels, or at meetups, or things like that. Oh, there's a mist coming down from there. Oh wow, that's a Shake Shack, that's, that's like USA. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, anyway, there's a lot of American things here. Uh, it's been brought in. So anyway, you can go meet that invest the angel investor where they are going to be, where you know they're going to be. So let's say you look up a, you just go, you could literally just Google search their name and you can often find that they're going to speak at a panel on so-and-so date in your area. You go to the panel as a visitor, as an attendee, regular attendee. When that panel is over, you make sure you walk to the front of the room and go talk to the guy, introduce yourself. Do not pitch him the first second you see him. You will kill it right then and there. Do not go up to him, hi, I got a business idea. Yeah, like everyone does, he's an angel investor. What else would you be talking to him about? He knows that. Do your research in advance. Check out who this guy is, what he likes. Go find common interest areas. Guy likes to go play golf, you're a golf advocate. Talk about golf. It don't matter, make that connection, make it a strong connection before you start, not only business. They know what you're doing. They play that game, they're cool with it, but if they enjoy the conversation with you, then it's all good. All right, that's how it works. All right, if you both like to go snow skiing or something like that, hello. Oh, I love salt. Anyway, wow. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, if you both like to go snow skiing, that totally took my attention away. Anyway, if you both like to go snow skiing, and you got to, that's your common area of interest, or you're into craft beers, it doesn't really matter what. But most of these angel investors have blogs. It's a very common thing for whatever reason, angel investors tend to blog a lot. So, figure out what they like, because they're gonna talk about it on their blog. 
You go figure out their interests, and if you can find a genuine common interest, and I say genuine, don't BS them. That's not nice. But you go find the genuine common interest, make that your common topic. Sooner or later, the smarter ones will just flip up and turn around and say to you, you got a business idea? Let's hear it. Because they know the game. That's okay. They're cool with that. What they don't want is some random dude coming up to them right after their, their, their panel meeting and saying, oh, here's my business plan. Shove it in their face. No, they don't want that. They will say, oh, thank you. Trash bin, later. I devno. <laughs> For Linux guys. Anyway, if you, don't, if you don't use Linux, you have no idea what devno means. Anyway, all right, so basically, you want to find the investor where they at, all right, the angel investor. That's the best approach, in my opinion. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I think that works. I've made lots of connections that way, by the way. Lots of them. Uh, cold connections, I've never had really too much success with. The warm ones like that, lots of them. And sooner or later you build up a Rolodex of these angel investors. So even if they don't invest in one venture you're on, your future investor, your future uh, venture, you can pitch them again. And they're open to it and they're cool with it. And what happens is they all know each other too. So one starts talking to the other and they call each other. When you have your idea, one calls the next and says, should we invest in this? And he says, yeah, he also, he also spoke to me. I think it's a great idea, but it's not fitting within my portfolio right now. I'm right now only investing in, I don't know, today the hot topic is marijuana tech, whatever. Um, I, you know, that, they could say that's what my focus is. I don't want to invest in this now. It's outside of my scope. I think it's a great idea though. You should invest in it if it fits your portfolio. And that's cool. That's good. That's what you want. When you visit multiple investors with the same idea, it is not a bad thing, even if the other ones turned you down. Nothing bad about that at all. They all know each other. And they know you're gonna do that too. It's totally part of the game. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Oh my God, it is humid. Holy smokes. Anyway, okay. Angel investors, that's a, probably the best way to get seed funding for your uh, business, as well as Series A rounds. Now Series A is, well let's start with seed rounds. What's a seed round? How much is a seed? Well, this light is taking forever to change. A seed round is basically somewhere between $50,000, which is an incredibly minute, tiny seed round, uh, to typically up to about one and a half million dollars. Meaning that's what they give you to start your business, that amount of money. Or one and a half million, two million area, and then to about five million is a typical series A round. That's what they will give you for that. Now what happens is, oh, light's changing, oh man. What they typically will do, all right, when they give you that secondary round is they loot the first round, meaning the percentage of ownership of the first seed round is reduced because the, a, the next the A round has a higher value uh, to the actual company, but at the same time, the company valuation, meaning higher value because they're giving more money, um, substantially more money in some cases. So let's say your seed round was a quarter million dollars, your A round was two and a half million dollars, it's 10x the amount of money. So that will dilute the ownership of the first seed round, meaning if they had 30% of your company to start with, now they have maybe 6% or something like that. Um, that's okay though, because that 6% is still worth the same financial amount as, uh, as it was before the two and a half million dollars was added in. But and that's a different story for a different day, um, diluting funds. Either way, Series A rounds, I, at that point you get the Series A round, you should be starting to prepare for the next set of um, things that you're going to achieve in that company by that point, uh, exit strategy or larger scaling, whatever it is. But now, you need money, right? Okay, let's talk about the other options for money. Venture capital is another one. That is typically $2 million and up. It is rare, sometimes $1 million and up. It is rare to find a VC, a venture capitalist, who gives less than a million dollars. It's just rare. What is a venture capitalist? It's basically a dude similar to an angel excuse me, not a dude, a company who operates similar to an angel but works from a pool of money from random wealthy people. So let's say you have lots of people with lots of money, each of them puts in X dollars, cumulatively you have Y dollars to invest, that becomes the venture capital fund. So if someone has a hundred million dollar fund, excuse me, I gotta wipe this sweat off, it's probably better to watch me do this than to watch the sweat drip down. <laughs> My apologies. Um, so let's say you got a $100 million venture capital fund. Um, they have now, that's, that's the amount of money they have to play with. Every company that comes to them asks for a certain amount of money. 
let's say VC money, $20 million, they can, that means they can invest in five different companies, divides the risk into five, and hopefully at least one of those companies will have a, a $300 million exit. That's kind of how they're looking for it, all right? That's how they operate. That's how venture capitalists operate. Angels are basically doing the same thing at a smaller scale, and it's an individual person as opposed to a uh, company, uh, an organization that is pooling different people's funds. Now, sometimes you get angel investors who will pool funds between them, meaning you get a lead investor. Hold on, I don't want this guy to drive into me. I think he's about to make a turn. He's going backwards at the moment. Um, sometimes you'll get angel investors who want to pool the funds. So you'll have one guy who wants to be the lead investor. He typically will get slightly better percentage rates than everybody else. And other people will follow on. And participate is the actual word. They will participate. Learn that word. I know it's just an English word, but it's the common industry term. They participate in the funding round. If you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, that's what you got to say. Um, so you get other angel investors who participate. So let's say your, your venture needs a quarter million dollars startup funds, seed funds. You might have one angel who wants to put in only 50 grand, 100 grand. That's pretty common. That happens. No problem. You don't turn that down because it's too little. You take that money. Take it. Someone's giving you money. Take that money. I then go to another angel investor and ask them to match it or to fill in the gap and, and follow on. So that's how you raise funds, essentially, for most startups. That's the majority of them. Your options are pay for it out of pocket if you're wealthy, pay for it on a credit card if you're not. Those are terrible options. Go get an angel investor, pitch to them. Don't cold pitch to them. Go figure out where they are. Track those people down. Um, or go to a venture capitalist. A venture capitalist will, by the way, take a lot more percentage, typically, not always, but typically than an angel investor. That's another thing, point of note. Um, when these people come on, round, on board, on board, when these people give you funds, they invest in you, they also don't just hand you money and walk away. They expect a whole lot from you, a whole lot. Uh, mostly performance results. They want to see what you're doing uh, in terms of reports, regular reports and things like that. But they sometimes will also make you connections. Not all of them do that. Ooh, wow. Glad I'm looking where I'm walking. That would have ended badly walking off of that while I'm vlogging. All right. They want to make, they also will make you connections sometimes. So let's say you have an angel investor. He's in, his portfolio includes 20 other companies that do something related to what you do. He has connections to help you get customers, to get clientele, to get uh, coll uh, collab people to collaborate with, other organizations, make connections. The, the person is your source of new connections. If you get a very famous angel investor, there is a number of them out there, just Google around most famous angel investors. I don't want to drop any names here, but lots of them are in New York City. Um, you could just Google most famous angel investor or VC. New York City, you'll see their names. Those people have huge Rolodexes of connections. Now, all you gotta do is figure out who is a good connection for them to make for you, and ask them for that connection. Almost always, if that connection's in their portfolio, they will say yes. I've never heard of anyone turning that kind of request down. So, let's say you are starting out um, building a service, there's an organization in the portfolio of the angel investor that is a perfect client and you can help them, your service helps them, ask that angel investor for the connection. That's also a very good opening way. Let's say you want to make a cold connection to an angel investor, don't talk to him about uh, business ideas and, and, and funding you and all that. Ask him for that connection if you, if you have a genuine one to make. Say, oh, I see that's in your portfolio, can you make a connection to us? We do X, Y, Z. Very clever idea, because now XYZ is in the angel investor's head. He wants to know more, maybe, if you're lucky, you've, intri you've intrigued him enough to ask. If not, you just got a connection out of it. I've never heard of any angel investor turning down a connection request of that nature, as long as it's, it's a uh, appropriate connection, meaning it's not like totally wrong. Um, like, I don't know, you're selling uh, toothbrushes and it's a company making cell phones or something, I don't know. Um, so basically, that's how you make that's how you get your money to start your company. Please don't put it on your credit card. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed signing off from Gangnam, Seoul, Korea. Yeah.